Hello everybody, it's still bundle week. Actually, it's bundle 10 days. I just say it's bundle week because Sid, I think this is the longest bundle, isn't it? Wasn't it seven days before? Or am I making no, that I think, up? Yeah, I think it was 10, but I think this time they tried to make it over two weekends rather than just, um, it, that may have been, have been the difference. Okay. Why it seems longer. <laughs> it, well, it always seems long, but it's exciting. It's like a big vegan whole food plant-based celebration. And this year's bundle, I think other years, most of the stuff had no oil in it, but this year, not, nothing. Everything's whole food plant-based, no oil. There's raw stuff and cooked stuff and exercise stuff. And Sid's going to talk to us about even some other things that are in there. So mm -hmm. welcome. And there's going to be a couple more lives today. I have a live at four. I've got to remember this. <laughs> I have a live yeah. at four and a live at six. And at six, uh, Cheryl is going to be making some of Chef Julia's recipes. So that's going to be fun for everyone. So Sid, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the people who may not know you yet. Talk about what you do and what you've got in the bundle. Sure. Well, I'm Sid Notter. Thanks for having me on today, Kathy. I really appreciate it. And about 36 years ago, we decided to stop eating meat for ethical animals, but we were still eating cheese pizza and Dairy Queen blizzards and um, Hostess cupcakes. So we definitely were not eating right, <laughs> even <laughs> though we had given up the meat. And then about eight years after that, we finally gave up the dairy. And then about 15 years ago, we decided that's it, we're going all in, whole food, plant-based, no added oil. And that's because early in my journey, when we were still eating all the junk, I ran across a class in our area sponsored by Dr. Pam Popper of the Wellness Forum Health Institute. And it was a four week class and I decided to go because I thought it would be something really fun to do with my girlfriends. And I already thought we were eating so healthy because we had just stopped eating meat. And that's where my eyes were like totally opened that we were not doing it correctly at all. So from there, I started to host classes in my shop. I had an art and frame store for many, many years. Ooh. And I had that instructor come in and do classes at my store. And finally, she just said to me one day, you know what, Sid, you know this material better than I do. Why don't you just go get certified yourself and teach it? <laughs> so that started my in entry into teaching classes. I saw so I was a certified health educator for Dr. Pam for about six years. And then I became certified under Dr. Campbell and Dr. Um, McDougall, Dr. Barnard. I'm a food for life instructor now. So lots of education along the way. And I wrote a newspaper column for seven years too, called the Nutrition Coach, where people would send in questions and I would type a column around the answer. Oh, very cool. Yeah. And, and of the different doctors, is there one that you personally follow a little bit more? Or I know there's, they're more alike than they are different, but there are some differences. Is, do you find that one suits you better? Like we just took the Dr. McDougall 12 day starch solution program in july cheryl and i mm -hmm. so that's what mm -hmm. we're following right now yeah that's a great program it definitely is they're all really good i, I yes. think they're all really good and i do follow them all but uh, you know over over time you just get in your own little groove too and um yeah so we definitely teach whole food plant-based no added oil we're not totally SOS free. Well, we're O free, but we're not, we're yeah. oil free for sure. Um, sometimes if people want to add a little salt, we talk about that, you know, the alternatives to salt, but we're not so strict that never ever eat salt. You know, Dr. McDougall mm -hmm. has that view and we kind of follow him on that, but to stay really low on salt and then refined sugar, no refined sugar, but we do use date syrup and things like that. Okay, and that's interesting because we uh, one of the things we have Stacy Cross. I don't know if you know her. She's actually our health specialist in the program for the whole year, so we have her on too. And a lot of times we end up talking about everybody ends up having to tweak everything for themselves anyhow, right? Or their health mm -hmm. conditions, especially salt. Often it seems to be. This is anecdotal information. I'm a recipe developer, everybody. So remember that. <laughs> Anecdotally, <laughs> what I see when people are asking me to help them eat less salt, it's usually for a health condition. And mm -hmm. I have a, a salt-free substitute that I make that's 
ridiculously cheap and ridiculously easy and it's a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, and one teaspoon celery seed mixed together and used like salt. If you want like a plain one, right? So not Cajun, not Italian, and there's nothing wrong with those mm -hmm. either. But um, the celery seed and the garlic kind of hit some of those spots in your mouth. So mm -hmm. while I don't eat salt free either, I create recipes that can also be SOS substituted. Okay. I, I try to include everyone. I'm, I always think about if that person was coming to my house to eat, I would make that for them, right? Mm -hmm. And so I yeah. can say, and so I love that you have this depth of knowledge from all the different programs. So that's really special. Yeah, so just say that one more time. A tablespoon of garlic powder, tablespoon of? Onion powder. Okay. And one and teaspoon then... of ground celery seed. Seed, okay, ground. Perfect, I'm gonna try that for sure. And tell me what you, th I think it works well, like if you're doing something that you don't want any of those extra flavors in. Yeah, so I'll share with you what we kind of do too. So of course we have the Benson's Table Tasty, which and everybody those are probably knows. Yeah. They're delightful. Mm -hmm. There's also this organics, uh, no salt seasoning from Costco, which is a huge Ooh. honking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I tried the sunshine from McCormick, all purpose, no salt seasoning, but it's really spicy. So if you want spice, this would be the one. It has ginger, thyme, red pepper, turmeric. And then if you just want less salt, I don't know if you are familiar with green salt, with, which I is a dried some. asparagus. Okay, yeah. I haven't used it that much because Cheryl, my wife, is like kind of weird about sea vegetables. Like to her, it's, mm. it tastes like eating fish. And she mm. wouldn't eat fish before she came vegan. And for the rest of you who are worried about if that's a thing, it's not. It's a Cheryl thing. So you will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so tell us about what you've got in the bundle this year. It's your third yes. year, right? Oh. It's my third year. I've actually got three things in the bundle this year. One is an ebook of my book, The Plan A Diet, Combining Whole Food Plant-Based Nutrition with the Timeless Wisdom of Scripture. That is the, in, the, in the bundle as an ebook this year. And then I collaborated with Eileen Kubsaftis in order to create a course called Age with Strong Bones. So I had a bone class and Eileen had a bone class and we decided let's team our pool of knowledge together on this and create a course, which is titled Age with Strong Bones. And it's really, really all comprehensive. Anything, you know, women are concerned and men too, that they're gonna fracture a bone later in life or, you know, their bones are gonna weaken to the point of fracture. So in this course, if I could, talk a little bit about it. We have five Absolutely. educational lessons, over three hours of educational content. And like the first one is about bone design and function and how our, our bones are really lightweight, but yet they're super strong. You know, we want to keep them strong. And so we talk about how our bones work together with our muscles, how they support our organs, how we couldn't even function without our bones. You know, it's all muscle and bone are connected. And so that's what lesson one is about. And even um, how our bones work, even our blood cells are formed within the marrow of our bones, you know, so our bones are super important. So we talk all about that in lesson one. And then we talk about bone statistics, which is 50% of all women over 50 are going to be diagnosed with low bone mass, you know, so this is really something to be concerned about. And then Eileen goes into depth about how our bones remodel. So our bones have all these cells and the dead ones got to get cleaned up. So they break down and then the, it rebuilds. So Eileen talks about that whole process, which happens every day constantly in our bodies. Our bones are breaking down and rebuilding constantly. So we talk about that all in lesson one. And then in lesson two, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Am oh, I talking oh, no, no. too much? No, no, no. I just said interesting. <laughs> I, I just, yeah. Because, like, I turn 59 next month. So, uh, even though I wear silly t shirts, I'm, I'm um, definitely it, well into my middle age <laughs> and, and mm -hmm. have to think about bones and things like that as well. Yeah, absolutely. 
And interestingly, it's um, many foundations that you know follow bone health say by the time you're 18 is going to determine what your future bone health could look like. So even in childhood, you know, really pay attention to your child's diet because their bones are forming now. And by 18, that is a major predictor of whether they could have bone loss in the future. So we talk about that too. And then of course, we talk a lot about calcium and minerals in our bones and everybody thinks, oh, calcium, but there's like 12 vitamins and minerals that our bones need, like boron and phosphorus. We talk about all of that in the course. And then we talk about um, where the source of calcium is, right? Calcium is a mineral in the earth, in the soil that's absorbed by plants. And that's where animals and humans get their calcium is from plants. So plants are the source of calcium actually. And when you think of all the large plant eating mammals like elephants and giraffes and horses, they're all getting enough calcium from plants to sustain their huge skeletons, you know, which is amazing. And whenever I do a cooking class, I say, you know what other large animal gets its calcium from plants? Cows. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cows milk, cows don't produce calcium, you know, much. To, I think some people actually believe that cows produce calcium. They do not. They do not inherently have calcium in their milk. They have calcium because they're eating plants. Interesting factoid there, right? We don't need milk to get our, our calcium. Can I ask you a question? Because one of the things that I get asked a lot by people who are new to the plant-based world or going vegan, especially who are older and maybe not working with a plant-based doctor mm -hmm. because they're always like, well, we're really worried about your bones and calcium. Mm -hmm. And so what would be some really good vegan, whole food, plant-based, no oil foods to then kind of replace that if that's something you're new at? Well, beans, and dark leafy greens are the best sources, but pretty much there's a lot of sources that we talk about in the course. We even put out a daily menu, like how much calcium you'd be getting this day if you ate this for breakfast, this for lunch. A bowl of bean kale soup and one orange has like between four and 500 milligrams of calcium. Oh, wow. But, you know, so it's really easy to get our calcium from plant foods when we're eating the right ones. Now, Dr. Thomas Campbell, he says if you're eating a, a vegan junk food diet and not consuming dairy, but not eating whole foods, then you should at least include like a cup of greens and a cup of beans. You know, he has some guidelines for that. But if you're eating a whole food plant-based exclusive diet, you're easily getting your calcium needs not Typically, I mean, unless you have some issue going on where you're not absorbing it or something. Absolutely. No, thank you so much, because that's really great information for everyone. Yeah. And then we also talk about the acidity level of our bodies, how that affects our bones. So, you know, that we have a pH level in our blood. It has to stay neutral. If it gets too acidic, it, our bodies will do whatever it takes to get back to neutral. And if it goes too alkaline, our bodies will do whatever it takes. So when we're eating the standard American diet, which is filled with dietary acids, you know, the meats and the dairies, our bodies have to buffer that acid. And one way it does it is to leach calcium right from our bones in order to buffer the acid. Interesting. So, we, yeah. So we don't have a calcium shortage problem. We actually have a calcium drainage problem when we're eating the standard American diet. That's something I wish people would say more. So thank you for that great, that's a great sound bite, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh gosh, well, yeah. And then we talk about, there's one lesson in the class that I do want to talk about specifically, which Eileen does an amazing job. In fact, I think she's on Chef AJ later today talking about it. It is that, what is today's common testing and prescription today's bone drugs you know how effective are the bone drugs how reliable are the DEXA scans should we be taking calcium supplements what about vitamin D we talk about all that in the class too because um and we're not here to advise people one way or the other you know what to do never ever would we do that but we just want to present the information so people people can make their own informed decisions about that oh that's really interesting because I know at least for me, and I know a lot of people I know are taking vitamin D um, because 
it doesn't matter for me. Like, what was it? Our doctor said, Cheryl, she's like, I can't believe you're not a hobbit. Her vitamin D was so low. <laughs> <laughs> and we were very excited. Yeah. Finally, she was taking a supplement and it actually went over. So she had to stop for a little while. But like mm. we were just starting to worry that she would never retain any of it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So there's times to supplement. Definitely if you're deficient, you know, there's times. Well, we talk about how vitamin D relates to bone health specifically in the bone class. Because oh, that's okay. a concern. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. So vitamin D does affect your bones as well. Yeah, could, because it aids in the absorption of calcium. Mm -hmm. ah, yeah. That's probably why at the store, I'm sorry, I know I'm sounding like an idiot, but I am an idiot about this, is that you know, that's why they do vitamin D calcium combos, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. probably. Yeah. And then we talk about the calcium supplements, too. And then even if we use sunscreen, does that block your ability to make vitamin D, which is a hormone? Actually, vitamin D is a hormone that our bodies uh, produce when the sun's rays hits our skin. And then it converts it with the help of our liver and kidneys. It converts it to the storage form of vitamin D so that we have the storage form that our bodies can then tap into. But what about using sunscreen? Does that affect our ability to make vitamin D? We talk about that in the class as well. And what SPF, you know, does and doesn't. So that's an interesting thing in the class as well. <laughs> but to really, I think the most important, one of the most important things is the, the bone drugs, because you'll see commercials on TV where for bone drugs and people are laughing and dancing and partying and they've built a musical now around a lot of the bone drug commercials. I don't know if you've noticed that. Have you have you noticed all <laughs> dancing and singing? And it, it will say that um, this drug can reduce your rate of fracture by 66%. Well, that sounds what? appealing. But in reality, that may not be the case at all because they report the statistics in on relative terms versus absolute terms. And we look at that in the class too. So Sometimes they report the results in ways that make the drug look far better than it is. Oh, that's disappointing. It's yeah. not surprising <laughs> yeah. because we have commercials for drugs. And I think that alone, that sentence in and of itself is an issue, right? It is. Yeah, only two countries allow that, and we're one of them. Yeah, you know, direct-to-consumer drug advertising, a lot of countries don't even allow that. But I have read that it's effective for them because people ask for those drugs at the doctor's office seven times more. You know, those drugs will be prescribed seven times more because people are actually asking their doctor for them based on the commercials on TV. Uh, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have many feelings about that too, because I think, well, for me, I'm, because the small print's there, I read all the things and I'm like, I would never ask anyone for this. <laughs> <laughs> right, like yeah, yeah. they look yeah. all happy and perfect and whatever, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell yeah. us more. Well, that's in the class. And then I've got a class that I teamed up with Vicki Brett Gock and Chef Valerie Wilson. Last May, we did a live class called Scrumptious Plant-Based Burgers and More. And we came up with burgers and some side dishes for this cooking demo. But then we expanded it as well into a cookbook with additional burgers and and side dishes too. So I came up with an Italian pizza burger because when I was 16, I worked at a local fast food place called Boodler's <laughs> that sold pizza burgers. And I've just never forgotten that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to create a healthy pizza burger. So I did. Took some time. I, you know, I came up with a pizza sauce and a a low fat mozzarella cheese and the whole thing and made that burger, which is in the class. And I have pictures of it, but you'll see it in the bundle. I also came up with a Southwest burger with fat free green chili sauce. And that green chili sauce is really good on tacos or burritos or tostadas, wherever you would use like a, a chili sauce or even a mayonnaise or a sandwich spread. Vicki came up with, oh man, I think we have nine or 10 burgers in the class and then a bunch of side dishes too. One of which I'm gonna demonstrate for a minute, black bean mandarin um, quinoa salad with tangy date lime dressing. I'm gonna make that for you in just a second. It's so easy, it'll just take, it won't take long at all. That sounds delicious. And then, uh, 
Yeah, so Vicky's got a Fiesta fajita burger in there, which is, oh my goodness, amazing. Um, Chef Bell has an English pasty burger, which I had never heard of an English pasty. A pasty, I guess, is like a, do you know what they are, Kathy? It's yeah, like a meat like filled pie. pie. A pie, yeah, a little pie yeah. thing. I had never heard of that. Well, she came up with a burger that resembles that somehow, oh. and that's in the bundle. And well, then there's beef burgers. That. Yeah, v burgers are really good too. I was gonna say we're almost at burgers. We're almost at cookout season too, right? It's just right around the yeah. corner. Yes, and there's a falafel burger and a millet sweet potato burger, and then we did our side dishes too. So I've got seasoned fingerling potatoes in there. Uh, there's potato salads. There are. A, there's a green bean and onion dish that I make with frozen green beans. That if you ever need a side dish and you have like five minutes, this is the one to think about because it's a skillet, onions, <laughs> so uh, brags or some type of low salt sodium, low sodium soy sauce and the frozen beans in it. Oh man, it just whips up with the braised onions. It, you know, it's green beans and braised onions to, was what it is. And that is so easy. So all of those recipes are in the cookbook, including the black bean mandarin salad that I'm gonna make for you now. And you have one other thing in the bundle too, don't you? Yeah, it's that ebook, um, the PDF of my ebook, the Plan A Diet, combining whole food plant-based nutrition with the timeless wisdom of scripture and showing how the two subjects actually correlate and overlap. So that is in the ebook too. I've never released it as an ebook personally before until the bundle. So that's a book that won an award back in 2020. So if you have an interest in that, that's in the ebook as well. That's awesome. I mean, that's so in the bundle. <laughs> it's in the bundle, not in the ebook. I'm sorry. That's okay. I translated that in my head. I knew exactly what you're talking about. I was with you for sure. Um, yeah. And Marilyn says she's hungry for a burger now. Um, yeah. Boomer and Beyond. Angela is on here with us. And she said it's a great book. Um, and then uh, Terry says, I have the bundle and appreciate all the components, the recipes, the coupons and the book, books. And it, it is really nice. And one thing, here, let me get it where it's both of us for a second. I don't know about you, but I, and I've got a couple of the books printed out. I always tell people, because sometimes people are like, e-books. I don't mm -hmm. like, I like everything written out. So what, what I do because I'm cheap, you can send the whole thing and get staples to print it, but it'll be like $25. Or you can print double-sided on your home printer and it's $5.19 to bind it. That's it. Wow, it's that's very, a great idea. And it's nice then you can write on it and things like that. And also they put this uh, plastic cover on the front and the back and they do all mm -hmm. the holes. You just hand them your printed stuff uh, I think Vicki and I were talking the first day because she was going to go and send it to get heavier paper. But when I was going to get a book printed out, I think it was the Ninja Creamy book, I think it was going to cost $27 if they printed it or $5 if I printed it. So mm -hmm. you can guess which way I went. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, good to know. Yes, you can. Staples is great for that. It really is, and I think that way, because it allows everybody to get things a little less expensively, and you can just print out the ones you keep using over and over again. And Cheryl and I are going to do a live or some videos about how to go through and buy it, how to download it, how to put it onto a thumb drive, how to save it to Google mm -hmm. Drive, because I know some of you guys are a little concerned about that. It's easy once you yeah, see it. Yeah, that's great. That's wonderful that you're going to do that. That'll be so helpful. I, I hope so. And Cheryl, um, Cheryl does tech support for a living too. So it'll be good for mm -hmm. have her there. And how do you usually store yours? Do you just keep yours on your computer or iPad or do you, when you have the eBooks or do you do something different with them? I do a combo. Sometimes I go through the eBook and pick out what I want to print. It might not be the whole book, but just things I know that I will actually make at first. And then you know, sometimes I will print the whole book. You know, if I like the wrap book, Melissa's wrap hand salad book, um, I think I printed the whole book on that because I wanted to try all the wraps. 
but it depends. I mean, if there's something in there I know I, I won't make, it just, yeah, you know, because I don't care for one of the ingredients or something, then I'm tempted to just skip over that and not print it. And I think that, that's <laughs> totally valid, totally valid. Don't feel bad because I'm not going to print out and get bound all the things because then that would be expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's a little bit beyond all of this, but if you're savvy and you have Adobe Acrobat, you could even put together things a little bit differently. But so mm. that's just a secret tip for those of you in the know. I'm not going to do, <laughs> I'm not going to do a demo on that because that wouldn't be super ethical. But if you're doing it for your home use, I know I don't care for, for my stuff right. for sure. And I don't think anyone else mm. would because you already bought it right, to get the bundle. Yes. One question is, um, can I get the book without getting the bundle? So Sid, is, is your book for sale after the bundle is done or is it only during the bundle? Well, signed copies are on my website, sidnotter.com, okay. or it's on Amazon, but only in Kindle and paperback, not the ebook. But actually, you could get the Kindle on Amazon or, you know, you could order from Amazon. But if you want a signed copy, go to sidnotter.com and you can get it there. Okay, great. And are we going to get to see you make us something yummy? Yeah. Do you want me to do that now? Oh, or did should I... we talk more about the bundle? It's up to you. Um, we can talk more about the bundle. Do you have some? St okay, so you talked about Lissa's wrap. So... For, for people who are knowing that, I'll put the bundle link back out. Um, so if you just came on and you're like, what are you guys talking about? What is this bundle? Where have you been hiding? Okay, but we, <laughs> it's over 150 products. And by products, I mean, and they're all digital products. So courses, eBooks, things like that. And they're worth, if you bought them separately, over $8,000, which is almost, I think it is triple what it was worth last year, but it still costs $49, just like it did last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I have in over $200 worth of stuff because I put in, when we were so close, I was like, what do you need? Because <laughs> I put in a class mm -hmm. and a book and I put in a, a bundle, a mini bundle of five different summer classes in there too. But there's everything from like what Sid was talking about, bone health, Dr. McDougal has something in there. Drina Burton has a fascia class. So it's more than just cookbooks. Do you have some stuff you'd like to highlight? Yeah, well, I I do. I too like Dr. McDougal's book on gut health. I mean, it, it's, it's not a book, it's a course on course. colonoscopies and irritable bowel syndrome and constipation, all things that if you're having any gut issues, I think would really benefit you. And then Dr. Marbus, Lori Marbus, talks about what blood tests you should order if you follow a plant-based diet, which oh. I find very interesting because we order our own blood tests. We don't go to the doctor for that. We just order our own. So I, I'm interested to read that for sure. Um, Tammy Kramer's course, Cooking yes. for Company. I mean, how often do you see on Facebook, I have company coming, what should I make? You know, they're not plant-based eaters. This would be the ideal book because she's, I think she's got 10 complete meals in there with the recipes and all the instructions. And then um, Dr. Loomis and Karen Dugan, three months of free membership to their platform, which awesome. I think is a really good deal. Um, there, I was looking through the recipes. Of, there's pizza, there's dressings, desserts, Mexican, Italian, Thai, Indian, anything you're looking for, plus a lot of raw foods. If you want to start including more raw foods in your diet, there's plenty of options for that. And then um, Shane Martin has a five-day kickstart program, which I think would be very Ooh. beneficial to anyone wanting to try this lifestyle. I'm Italian, so there's a cookbook in there called Plantiful Fare with an Italian flair. So that product interests me because I am Italian. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> read about those 40 Italian dishes. And then there's products in there for kids, too, which I really appreciate. Dr. Nikki Davis has a course where she's cooking with her 11 year old. So, you know, get to get your children involved with it and Meryl Fury and there's other products in there that focus on children, too, which is cool. What about you, Kathy? What, what have you got in there? Uh, 
and I'll talk about that. Mary Cooper said she just made Lisa's Everything Bagel Wrap and filling it now. She said the bundle's amazing. Thank you for doing these lives to inspire us all. So we, I have a couple of things. Like, actually, I love Chef Julia, too. She's just one of my favorite peeps. So we're going to be making some her um, yakisoba and tofu tonight. And I don't know if you know, Lisa Rice has, um, has kind of an international passporty cookbook and she has some <laughs> Filipino food. So I'm interested in trying some of that as well because it's, it's not often that you can find that from someone who's actually eaten Filipino food that is not full of meat. So I feel like she grew up, you know, she can help me really learn those flavors a lot. For in the bundle, we, Cheryl and I um, made an ebook called Thriving on Starch. And it kind of just gives you a little bit of information about the Dr. McDougal starch solution, basic things to eat if you want to kind of go and start there. There's an introduction from Heather McDougal and Stacy Cross in here and 29 recipes. So if you're, if you're nervous, then you could just look at one thing. I have a balsamic vinegar class in, which has about seven recipes and different things in there. And then the summer ones, there's two sushi classes, a chilled soup class, a summer air fryer class, and I've forgotten what the other one is, but there's another summer <laughs> class. <laughs> so for your balsamic vinegar class, Kathy, do you start with regular basic balsamic and then add things to it, or how does that go? Oh, and let me, um, I knew you were going to ask that, and I knew I was going to forget what's in here. Let me... I think I have another <laughs> note because I did a bunch. I did, um, there's like seven or eight recipes in there. Come on, I know I have it written down. So like one of the things I do make too in there, which is crazy, is like there was this, uh, so I do use some different plain vinegars and we're not flavoring them and making them into flavored vinegars. Let me answer your question first. Oh, but okay. But you could use flavored vinegars or regular. So someone was like, I have all these balsamics. I don't know what to do. I do a cooking club. So we have two classes every month and they get to have input on what they mm -hmm. put in. And so we made uh, balsamic tomatoes. We made balsamic soy curls that was cooked in a tomato mm. sauce. So it was very Italian dish. And if you don't like soy curls, you could use chickpeas or something else to put in there, or tofu if you still are okay with soy. Uh, we made some mocktails with flavored balsamic vinegars, and we did that on a live recently. And a TikTok trend was this healthy Coke. And so what it was mm. was like balsamic vinegar and lime seltzer. It does not taste like a Coke. So <laughs> it looks like a Coke. <laughs> it's fizzy like a Coke. So what I did is I mixed in some elderflower balsamic, some um, fig balsamic, and I used some non-alcoholic holiday pie bitters. So those are whole food plant-based. There's just some flavors but have spice. And you could use a little date syrup if you wanted to sweeten it or a little maple syrup if that works in your eating plan. And that one mm -hmm. tastes like a Coke. It's crazy. Wow. <laughs> and, and so again, I'm not, in, in no way am I suggesting that's what you should drink all day. You should drink water. And then when you're having friends over and they're having cocktails and maybe you don't want to have one, maybe you can have a fun balsamic drink instead is kind of where I'm wow. going. Interesting. I'm definitely going to check that out. But did you ever hear of uh, shrubs or switchels when you were growing up? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Switz Switchels is an apple cider drink that they used to drink in the summer on the farms. So it's like the original Gatorade for people who were really working hard. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. Interesting. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, the, so some people may be like, vinegar in the sparkling water, that doesn't sound delightful. But it, mm -hmm. it's, it has a history for sure. Now that you say that, I just had a flashback. Is in I, on my childhood days, um, we had a tub of tamarindi syrup under the sink. Have you ever heard of that? It's tamarind, but they called it tamarindi in Italian, 
and Ooh, you'd mix yeah. that with water and you had, had I'm sure it wasn't healthy <laughs> you know it's probably just a syrup you know with a lot of refined stuff in it thinking back but yeah maybe I'll, I'll try to think about some a tamarindi recipe one of these days oh that sounds interesting I am yeah. a little bit frozen um okay, not, well, not... I, think I'll... <laughs> I see you clearly and moving I'm trying to go to the one window and it's not letting me click it. So it may, you may be in the small square. And if you are, I apologize. And I'm trying to get you back where it's just you. But I'll <laughs> smile a lot and look really excited like I would if I was sitting next to you in the kitchen if I can't. Find it. <laughs> okay. It could also well, be. Well, maybe oh. I should prepare for the cooking demo then while we're. Should I do that? Should I set yeah, up? Yeah, the... that sounds okay. great. Sounds good. And Give I'm... me a second. Oh, absolutely. Take your time. As I am trying to wrestle with some of this, let's see if I move back from that. Nope. Let's see if I just, um, this is just very exciting. Let's see, does that, yeah, and I can't put comments on anymore. So um, Marilyn says she's made switchel. Jeremy says I put balsamic in my Ninja Creamy plant ice cream. Yeah, I have a strawberry, ball. actually that's the other recipe in that class is a strawberry balsamic sorbet so, oh that sounds good strawberry balsamic sorbet yeah and when i use it with a ninja creamy it's sweetened with a can of pears so pears and juice strawberries and a little balsamic or you could use any fresh fruit i like balsamic that sounds very interesting that's a dressing or what that or that's a sorbet that's it's a, an yeah, it's an sorbet. actual sorbet. So oh. it's, it, it's sweet. And then you're just adding enough balsamic, especially with some of the California balsamics like fig or an elderflower or a lemon. It can really add some, like a lot of delightful flavors. Yummy. Is my head cut off or can you see me? Okay? No, you are perfect. <laughs> and I just am apologizing profusely because normally it would only be you on the screen. And I can't even, can oh. I change the size of this now? But go right ahead. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. Well, this is one of the recipes in the Scrumptious Burgers and More cooking class. It's a video and a cookbook that's included in the bundle. It's called Black Bean Mandarin Quinoa Salad with Tangy Date Lime Dressing. Mm. And... I'll tell you some of the ingredients, uh, some of the measurements, but for, so for the quinoa, this is one cup of dry quinoa that's been cooked. So cook your quinoa according to your package instructions. And you're gonna start with that. And this salad is so easy and it's so versatile because you could add in whatever your favorites are. I'm going to put in some red bell pepper and some red onion i love red onion oh it's so pretty yeah it's colorful for sure and then a half cup of parsley and this is the flat leaf italian parsley and however much you want the recipe has a suggestion for you for all of these amounts which you will get in the bundle and some cilantro too some freshly chopped cilantro, a can of drained and rinsed black beans, 15 ounce can of those. And then my favorite part are the mandarin oranges. It says, well, it says two or three in the recipe, but I use like four or five because I really like the mandarins in there. So we're gonna mix that up and try to keep some of it in the bowl. <laughs> I'm, I'm always gonna... cleaning up after tossing <laughs> something like that. Uh, Terry says, I need to try quinoa. That would be something new for, for me. Do you have any suggestions? Absolutely. Any suggestions on quinoa or? Yeah, would you start with just white quinoa or do you have any, should Terry know any information you think to try her quinoa for the first time? Yeah, I would say to stick with the white and go from there. I mean, they're all delicious. And quinoa is the highest protein grain, is it not, Kathy? I mean, that's what I was taught. It, I believe it's, it is, yeah. Yeah. So I'm using um, 
I think I just bought this at Walmart, actually. Organic white quinoa that I purchased at Walmart. So, um, you know, it's easy to find quinoa. I think they have the multicolored quinoa, too. There's different colors of quinoa. I honestly haven't tried too many of the other colors very often. I think I made a salad with the tricolor quinoa once, but I think the nutritional values are pretty similar. It's just, um, have you found any difference in the taste of different quinoas, Kathy? Or Sometimes I find that the darker can, t can maybe be a slightly milder, but I am wondering if, because so some quinoa is pre-washed and some isn't. Oh, and that's mm -hmm. the trick. So like if, cause quinoa is actually a seed as you know. And so there's this coating, just like any seed that for it to come out. And so th it's bitter and that's what keeps the birds from eating all of it. I, and usually it will say on the package if it's pre-washed or not. And mm -hmm. Costco's is pre-washed. Cause I, I made a mistake of thinking all quinoa was pre-washed one time and didn't wash mm. the quinoa. I don't know if you've ever run into anything like that. I have not. I always rinse it. I did out of habit. You know, I just always rinse it. But good to know that Costco's is already pre-rinsed, pre-washed. I did not yeah. know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. but no, I think it's delightful. I love the texture and it's really, really fast cooking. It's really, like you're saying, high protein. And like mm -hmm. this salad would be a perfect thing to meal prep once mm -hmm. the weather gets warm and then just keep in the, in the fridge. I don't know about you, but oftentimes in the summer, I just don't feel hungry because it's so, I live in North Carolina, which used to be a moderate mm. place but it's 72 today in, in the beginning of March. So it's gonna be in a hundred and, and eating something straight from the fridge can be so refreshing. Yeah. Now last year I had something happen. You know, when you cook quinoa, the, the little tail, it sprouts, you know, the little tail comes out when it's cooked. And I made a dish last year for the bundle and I used quinoa that did not sprout. So I think it was bad. I had never had that happen to me before, but, um, I, something I meant to look into and I never did. Like if quinoa can sit for too long and then it no longer sprouts the little tail. But anyway, something interesting there. So I'm gonna make the tangy date lime dressing now, which is basically lime juice. And I don't have a clear bowl right here, this size. And then some apple cider vinegar, a quarter cup of date syrup. And I'm just using a date ladies date syrup here, oh, quarter cup, I gave that away, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are most people telling the ingredients, the some quantities? Some people do and some people don't. I think it all. Oh, okay. So all you right. do you, this is your recipe, so you can do whatever you want. <laughs> if it's somebody else's okay. recipe, I'm much more protective over it. I, I, I'm not a good secret keeper myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I bet everybody's going to get the bundle anyway, so they'll get this recipe if they do. And then I have the spices, which are Italian seasoning, cumin, garlic powder, and oregano. And then you whisk that up. Now, I've, for years, I think I was whisking wrong. I would whisk in a circle, and that's not how you're supposed to whisk, is it, Kathy? Or I read yeah. that you're supposed to just go back and forth. Interesting. I'm like... I'm trying to think of how I do it. It depends on how thick the mixture is. Now you've got me thinking really hard. And, and I'm one of those people, I can go down a deep hole of things. <laughs> but yeah, I think if you go back and forth, it, it creates kind of that vortex, doesn't it? That kind of gets everything mixed up faster, though. I think that's it does. Yeah, I've read about why it's better to not stir it, but to like just whisk back and forth real quickly, because something with the emulsion factor of the especially if you have things that don't blend well. Interesting. But anyway, that's a little factoid that... <laughs> we love factoids right. here. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I'm going to taste this because you always want to sample your dressing, right? The dressing, I think, is what makes or breaks the salad. It's really good. But this is where you tweak it to your liking if you wanted to. You could make it sweeter. 
it has a strong vinegar taste. If you don't want that, you know, you could um, put, put less or add more spices. So I'm going to pour this dressing over and just toss it. And I'm, I would like to um, chill this before I eat it. You know, you could eat it just like this. I think it's better chilled. So I'm going to chill it. But it's just such a simple recipe. And it's pretty and it's nutritious. And I will show it to you Ooh, up close if I can. It, yeah, it looks <laughs> great. It's really focusing in on it. I love all those colors. And it packs well, too. If you're going on a road trip or, you know, you're, you're going out running errands and you want to bring a container of this as a snack or, you know, so you're not getting hungry when you're out and about. I love that because nothing in there is going to go particularly bad, even if it's a little bit warm, because it's not like it's the dreaded potato salad of our childhood. Right. Yeah, so that's what's going on there. Also in the... um burger book um can i go grab my burger book real absolutely. quick absolutely okay, this is I'll your right show back. i'm just hanging out in it <laughs> for real um oh and everybody's saying it looks delicious everybody loves the whisk tip also my wife came on it was her birthday yesterday so she's at work but she's typing in everybody's asking how her birthday was um, Fiddle D says, I wish we could dra grab a serving through the screen. You and me both. It's about lunchtime where I live. Oh, look, you did the <laughs> spiral bound too, didn't you? So this is the cookbook, Scrumptious Burgers and More, Plant-Based Burgers and More with Vicki Brett Gock, Chef Val Wilson, and myself. And there's time just to go through a couple of these things, I think. Let's see here. So we've got Vicky's Fiesta Fajita Burgers. I don't know if you can see that picture, mm -hmm. but it is amazing. Ooh, I love yeah. all those toppings. They look so vibrant. Yeah, and here's the Italian pizza burgers. I'm not sure if I got the glare off the page there. You, you do, and it's off. And so you have a burger and then you're topping it with sauce and your homemade mozzarella cheese. Right. There's an easy peasy pizza sauce in there that you could use on pizza or, you know, pizza bread or whatever you're making where you would use a pizza sauce. And there's a fat free Parmesan included. And then the mozzarella cheese, which is not made with nuts, but is made with oats. And nice. then we have a Chef Bell's pasty burger with a white onion sauce on gluten free quinoa bread. Ooh, so she's she got the she's got the bread recipe in there too. Yes. Ooh, yeah. I need to make those. Okay, that's that's going on my top ten. <laughs> this is the Southwest Burger with green chili sauce recipe. Oh. There's that green chili sauce that um, goes well on anything Mexican or or just a sandwich like a spread. You know, if you needed a spread. Here we have um, a millet and sweet potato burger by Chef Val. Mm, I love sweet potatoes so much. Yeah, me too. Oh, and then Vicki has an oven baked falafel burger in there. Which oh, is that's very good. Cheryl would like that for sure. There's um, the beet burger. And then um, Vicki has a mixed green salad with creamy Michigan cherry balsamic dressing which you would appreciate with your balsamic. Uh, I think she uses a, um, a cherry balsamic vinegar for that recipe. I love the flavored balsamics. And so since Cheryl has a question for you, she wants to know if you're from Michigan as well. You know, I like to do, uh, she likes to know all of her Michigan connections. So Cheryl, I'm not, I'm from way. Illinois. I'm a neighbor, I'm in Illinois. She has relatives in Illinois as well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then Vicky's got her chimichurri corn on the cob in there. Ooh, now that looks that, and that works really well with my air fry, summer air fryer class because I tell you how to make air uh, corn in the air fryer, which is magical and requires nothing but corn and an air fryer because the corn caramelizes itself, right? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. to put that chimichurri sauce on it would be ridiculously delicious. 
Mm -hmm. Sounds good. There's so many things in the bundle that I'm excited to, once the bundle's over, I'll really have time to look at it in more depth because right now it's kind of busy. I bet you're, I know you are doing lives every single day, aren't you, Kathy? I Let's am. See. I think in the 10 days, I think I'm ending up doing 30 lives. Wow. Yeah, and I, I can't wait to be able to look more into all the different things too because it's super exciting and there's so much good stuff. And when you said you do you have another live today, right? What time? Yes, I'll be um, on Facebook. I will be interviewing Tammy Kramer from Nutmeg Notebook about her bundle product, Cooking for Company. And you know what we should talk about, Kathy, too, is that spring collection cookbook where over 70 bundle contributors. Yeah, right there. We all yeah. sent a recipe in and made one collector edition cookbook, which will never be for sale anywhere else, right? Or never be offered again after the bundle. I know. So. And it's really cool. There's a lot of stuff. What are what are your recipe? Did, did you get a, put a recipe in this time? I did. And they asked for spring recipes. And I put in a Mexican chocolate pudding, which because of Cinco de Mayo, I thought it could be kind of springy. <laughs> That's perfect. No. And I put in um, a strawberry rosemary flavored water because sometimes people mm. have trouble drinking water. So some, and actually with the strawberries, see, this is how I can't keep a secret. So when you get the strawberries and you're cutting off those tops, you can use just those tops to make the strawberry water or to put in your own mm. water and muddle in and use the rest of the fruit for something else. Mm-hmm. So it's like, are I'm you never going telling be... you a secret. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Sid, I said, Sid says, I'm never going to tell you a secret. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't hear what you just said. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh no, that's okay. I, I, I had just said, oh, see, I can't take a, se I can't keep a secret. And then I said, Sid's going to say, I'm never going to tell you a secret. Because oh, I'll tell all that. <laughs> And what were you getting ready to say before I un unfortunately interrupted you? Oh, no problem. Yes. Yeah. So I, I was on Chef AJ a couple of days ago talking about my ebook that's in the bundle to the Plan A Diet. So if anybody has any interest in that, go back and listen, you know, to Chef AJ's YouTube presentation on that. And are you going to be on Chef AJ Live too, Kathy, I coming up? I am. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, actually, oh. at this time, I'm going to be at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And Cheryl's going to be on there with me. We're going to talk about Thriving on Starch, about oh, yeah. that ebook, And then I'm going to be making um, sausage patties, which oh. sounds like the least whole food, plant-based, no oil thing you could make, right? But it's with quinoa and potato and they're delightful sausage patties that you can use in all different ways. And you make a sausage spice blend, which we'll be making. Oh, really, really good. Yeah. Can't wait to see that. Oh, well, thank you. Well, hopefully I'll be able to catch you this afternoon. And what time is it again that you're doing it? It's at one o'clock on Facebook Live, but it's not my, it's going to be on my personal page, Sid Notter, okay. not my uh, business page so and that's in about an hour from now I believe right yes it is and okay. you, as you know we were having trouble today with Facebook which was really causing me a lot of stress because Facebook shut down and I've got a live book today <laughs> it's, but yeah. I guess it's back up and running now fingers crossed it'll stay that way and if it doesn't you'll pivot and you'll do beautifully and figure something else out but hopefully everything is good for the way it is um jill says i love your tips and secrets and my non-secrets uh <laughs> Mar mari z says and i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that can you download the bundle on an ipad i don't have a computer right now you sure can it's 540 megabytes which um, if you have a fairly, you don't have to have a brand new iPod, uh, um, iPad or, listen to me, I'm so old, I said iPod, nobody knows what those are anymore, or a phone, it should fit in there. Also, even with an iPad or a phone, you can put it on a Google Drive and then just download what you want back and forth. Just make mm -hmm. sure, because you've got a year that you can download all this stuff, but the courses, you're going to download a PDF and you have to click a button. So like 
Sid's course, my course, um, Darina Burton's courses, there's a whole bunch of courses. Make sure you go ahead and register for that. You click that button, you get that sign in because then you'll have it forever, but you only have a year to sign up. I know, I don't know about you. I had, I always have courses in and I noticed like the week before bundle happens again, there's like so much activity with people trying yeah. to sign up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've noticed that too, that I'm now I'm getting a lot of signups from last year's bundle right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you just don't want people to forget because most, you know, a lot of times we have these in the back end where it just magically goes away after a year. So it's nothing personal mm -hmm. if you're trying to come in real late. Uh, Terry Moses says she has her bundle already on the iPad. So that should work really well. If for some reason you've gotten the bundle and you're having problems, Cheryl and I are going to do some little videos about some things at some point this week. But um, you can also email her at support at healthyslowcooking.com. She might be able to answer a quick question for you. Um, uh, and Davinka was saying, when is Cheryl or did she already give instructions about Google Drive? Um, no, she has not yet. And she's at her actual job instead of working from home today. But probably tomorrow or the next day, maybe even if we, if we have a short live tonight, we're going live and she's cooking. So it could be that we do it tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. And hopefully that helps. But I'm going to let you go because you have another whole thing to set up for. But Sid, <laughs> I just cannot thank you enough for spending time with us and, and teaching us some new stuff about bone health and showing us that delightful salad. It was, it was fun hanging out with you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Kathy. I really appreciate it any time and have a great rest of your bundle week and i will be seeing you soon on facebook live <laughs> okay. okay all right take bye, care everybody. now bye-bye